Hello, good morning. Hello, Jackie. Hello there. <laughs> The infamous Jack in. I know we've got a lot of people uh, hopefully being able to see this. So if you can, can you um, give us a little uh, comment in the thing so I can make sure everybody's got it and then we can um, go from there. So how is your, um, how are you at the moment? The most busiest person I know, I think. Every programme I've been on, seen, you've been on there. Is it all a bit surreal? I think Surreal covers it covers it very well. I mean, I must just say that um, first of all, I, I never watch myself. I, I just I just can't. Um, but secondly, they, they do have a way of kind of chopping the interviews up. So although it looks as if you're giving hundreds of interviews, you've probably given one, and they've just used it a hundred times, but used different bits of it. Um, but I, I definitely um, I'm thinking that you you really must be getting sick of seeing me by now. <laughs> I think you see more of me than my family does. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good question, actually. What, what do your family think of this? I bet it, it's quite bizarre for you, is it, really? I think there's a couple of things. I mean, I, I think that, you know, um, many of you, of course, are mothers, um, but uh, maybe your children are not, uh, not as old as mine. Mine are, you know, around their 30s. Um, and as a mother, you really do have to do something exceptional to impress your children. Yeah, I haven't done anything except <laughs> to impress my children yet, which is dead weird because, of course, you know, I'm talking to lots of um, university students, etc., who, who last us some, hang on my every word, and I'm thinking, why can't you be my children? <laughs> and my husband, um, he's, uh, he's he's uh, he's lovely. I mean, he he just kind of goes with the flow. Um, and I am really busy, as you say, Kate. Uh, and what I find is that, you know, coffee does just appear on my desk. Um, if it's a long interview, water appears, food appears periodically. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I know we've just chatted briefly while we were getting ready, but what, what, what do you think it is that appeal to people? Because it was literally overnight, wasn't it, that you, your video was shared and then everybody was talking about you and the situation, really. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'll go back to your word, Kate, surreal. Mm. Um, because, of course, the actual interview, uh, the actual um, meeting um, took place back on the 10th of December. Um, so, I mean, since then, you know, we'd kind of had a, a debrief among the, the, the councillors that, that weren't the most prominent ones. Um, we managed to get the clerk reinstated. So in many ways, we've kind of moved on. Um, and then, you know, th this broke. Um, and the first thing I knew about it was, well, first of all, I am rubbish at anything to do with IT. I've only just got to grips with Zoom. Other platforms are available. <laughs> um, so, you know, somebody sent me this clip, that, that um, the screenshot that said I was trending number three in the country. <laughs> means absolutely nothing to me whatsoever. So I thought, I know, I'll send that on to my son. Um, and he'll tell me if this is something I need to need to think about. No reply. Um, so it wasn't until the following morning when literally there are three um, um, uh, camera vans parked outside, reporters knocking on the door. Now my phone is completely full of messages, etc. My son's rung my, um, my husband because he can get through to him and said, I, I, I thought she'd sent me something about somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> didn't realise that it was real. Um, so uh, yeah, that was that was the first. Th I mean, that weekend was just. Um, it was almost like um, there had been a natural disaster. <laughs> you all just, you know, what do you do in a, in that situation? Make tea. Yeah. Um, so you know, my husband was making COVID secure tea and coffee um, for um, for all the reporters and everyone that turned up. Um, so so strange. What what is it that people are asking you the most or want to know about? Is it about the situation that you found yourself in in the meeting? Do you think, or or was it how you responded to it? I think the tone has changed. Um, I mean, I, I literally thought this will last overnight. This will last the weekend. It won't last longer than the end of the week. It, that kind of thing. Um, so. As it's gone on, I mean, first of all, people were really interested in the event. Why did it happen? Why were those people angry? You know, did you have the authority, Jackie Weaver? Yeah, we all heard that one. What are standing orders? Um, so that was kind of the focus of the original questions. But as time has gone on, 
I think that everyone's taken something different away from it. Um, I mean, I was doing some interviews um, earlier in the week with um, very successful female politicians, um, both parties, um, sorry, both main parties. Mm. Um, and, you know, it was talking about the challenges they'd faced um, as they had come into, um, you know, politics. Um, other people have, other women particularly, have written to me and said, well, you know, actually, although you're talking about local government, you know, this is, this represents um, many board meetings and many actual, you know, kind of staff meetings where, you know, as women, we feel men just do not hear us and expect something different from us than they expect from their male colleagues. And I think to myself, well, I mean, I'm old. I, I kind of thought young people had sorted this years ago. Mm. You know, um, because yeah. I, I do have a very nice working environment most of the time. Yeah. And so I'm kind of sheltered from it. So I think the conversation has changed. Um, so it's changed into, you know, what can women, why should women get involved? If women get involved, what can they expect? And if things are difficult, how do we deal with them? Yeah, That's definitely. I think our themes for this weekend are what our mission statement is as a charity, and that's um, encourage, empower, um, sorry, encourage, inspire, empower. And today's theme is all about encourage. And that's why we chose you as that one, because I think we, we still need to encourage more females into politics for the right decisions to be made. Yeah. Um, we have got um, XMP Antoinette Sandbach speaking over the weekend as well and talking about her experience of that. Um, but also it's the local politics because that's the starting platform, isn't it? Your, your parish councils, your town councils. I, I think it's even more than that. I mean, I, I've been involved with the town and parish council movement for 25 years. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's one of the things that, I mean, you've got to be kind of keen on something to stick with it for that long. Um, and it definitely isn't the money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the idea that um, people still don't see the value of getting involved at that level. I, I think that there has been, I mean, it's well reported, a, a down spiral of interest in large P politics, party politics. Um, I think that sometimes what you see in the, the televised houses of parliament is enough to put, you know, sometimes I think it's enough to put handful to shame. Yeah, I'm just about to say that, yeah, some of the, yeah. the snidey comments and things like yeah. that, definitely. And you definitely get the impression that, you know, that one of the qualifications for, for being in the house is that you've got to learn to shout louder than everybody else. Yeah. Um, and if that's not your style, then I can see why that would be off-putting. And I also think that um, one of the frustrations people have is that men and women is how to influence central government. And that is hard. And that's not my speciality. But what I do think is that unfortunately, all of politics gets tarred with that. And if we, I, I'm trying to kind of change the language so we don't talk about local politics, we talk about local democracy. Mm. Because at local level, so much can happen. You can influence decisions. Yeah, yeah. You are not going to be, largely, you are not going to be subject to the same kind of... Um, pressures and um you know agendas um, that you might be elsewhere and you will be talking about something that you know about which is your local community yeah now, you know whether or not you want to go on and do something further in politics or whether it is that you are just interested in your local area and making a change there your town and parish council is the place to do it definitely um, right, I put this on the wrong group, so it's still going out, but I'm going to stop it and move over because I want to see if anyone's got any questions for you. Is that OK? So it'd be a, a two second um, delay in moving over. So, yeah, with, there's two groups on the well and I had one on my mind and not the other. So I'm just going to stop recording, move us over and then open it up because I think people will have questions and are waiting in that group for you. So it won't be a second. Hello everybody, many apologies, I launched it in the um, wrong group, but I know a lot of you are trying, um, I went over to that group, but wanted to open up to any questions um, that people may have, so you can ask on the Facebook page and I will get that up now for you, so if there's any questions for Jackie, please let me know. Um, I think one of my questions was, 
what how would you or why would you encourage young women particularly to to look at the the levels of parish council and and your town councils um it, it's an interesting question kate and I, and I guess i kind of um would throw it back at them and say you know is there something you are trying to change because i think it starts from there i don't think it starts from i'm really interested in town or parish councils it yeah comes from there so you know if there's something in your community if, there, if there's something that you are trying to change or influence then look at the parish or town council as a mechanism for doing that um, because i think it comes from there then it's then it's real it's not um it, it's kind of like you know i just think they feel the same way about grant funding you know you, you shouldn't say how much money can i get and then what should i spend it on it's what do I want to do and where can I get the money to do it? That's my personal view. Yeah, definitely. And do you think there's anything that can be done to change the, the local and parish council? Because I think the handful of group would be what most people do think is what parish councils, the age demographic, you know, the, the, they were nearly all females. So there was, there was a couple of, uh, sorry, there was a couple of females, but nearly predominantly always males. Do you think that they could look at changing it a bit to help yeah. young people? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a two way conversation. I mean, I, I have kind of this conversation largely with younger people, um, you know, which is about, well, well, actually, un unless somebody approaches them, how will they know that they need to change? So it's about getting involved at some level. And, and, and again, it comes back to this finding something that works for you. Now, even at, at, at town and parish council level, you may not feel that you have the um, resu personal resources um, because of you know, time or whatever um, to commit to being a councillor. Well, is there something else you can do in that council? Mm -hmm. Is there a project that you can get involved with? Is there a committee you can be involved with as a non-voting member? Lots of things you could offer um, in terms of you know, involvement um, that might have the council thinking. But even when we're looking at handforth, um, you know, I'm not putting Hanforth forward as a, as a model by any means, <laughs> but they have been trying very hard to change, you know, there's kind of like a dynamic there of, of two halves, one half, you know, more open to change, the other half much less open to change. Um, and actually what has happened since the 10th of December is that, you know, apart from the silliness around it with people just wanting to watch it as a show, um, there has been an awful lot more scrutiny by the public of Handforth. Mm. There is an election for um, a vacancy in May, and I am sure that what we will see is real interest by the community in that seat. That's what's going to make a difference. Yeah, definitely. So another question we've had is um, from Maurice, one of my team. Is there any advice you would give to your younger self when you first got involved in local democracy? Um, yep. Um, when somebody says it's not personal, it is. Mm. And you have to find a way that works for you of how to deal with it. Um, and the way I deal with it um, is that I, I talk to myself <laughs> not, sometimes out loud but not always um, and I am absolutely clear that we are talking about an issue we are not talking about me yeah. and often I'm asked you know how did you stay so calm on that night yeah and that was because I had a very clear vision of what I wanted to achieve that night and yeah. I wanted that meeting to go ahead mm. and whatever was coming my way it was just water off, at that point was water off a duck's back because all I could see was we are having this meeting. Yeah, yeah, and they, and they were being destructive and really didn't want to have it. So any other questions, just put in the comments on the Facebook page because I am seeing them. Another question from Holly, who is um, speaking over this weekend. Do you have any tips for women who may be a little quieter as to how to make substantial change? went amongst women who may be more confident than than others yeah I, it, it's, it's a really interesting question that because a lot of the um the the questions that kind of come my way um are, and I'll, I'll exaggerate to make a point are you know all the women are nice and all the men are bad but actually 
women can be really tough. Yeah. Women are not always nice to women. Mm. Um, so um, if you don't feel that you have, um, you know, you have something that you're trying to get across, and you don't feel that you can do it justice yourself, then ask somebody for help. There is nothing more flattering than somebody asking your opinion or asking your help. Yes, so definitely. That's, that's a really good point. Good point across. There's yeah. no pain in that at all. Yeah. And I think, like you say, if even if they start to put your your point across, you'll get the confidence then to start talking about it yeah. as well, won't you? Yeah. Um, any other questions? Put it in. I thought I saw my mum had put a question <laughs> on, but now, now I can't find it. Um, oh, yeah, hang on. I've just refreshed. Um, Oh, one of the trustees of our charity has put, she salutes your resilience. <laughs> um, and Helen has said, how can you make politics exciting and interesting? So Helen works with um, young women as well, as part of her um, company. And I guess she wants to inspire young people to be, be involved, as, as do we. OK, I'm going to share confidence with you now. Politics is not exciting <laughs> or interesting. <laughs> and I am not the world's greatest saleswoman. <laughs> I can't make it sexy, exciting, or interesting. But I think what is sexy, exciting, and interesting is when you have something that you feel passionate about and you use politics and the system to move it forward. So I, I don't know if that answers your question or not. I think yeah, I think it, for me with young people, it's about a passion, isn't it? A lot of people that would speak to me, it's about the lack of mental health support. So that's their passion and working with them to shape what it could look like or have their exactly. voice heard. So, so the passion doesn't come from politics. Yeah. Politics is the mechanism by which you are going to achieve your goal. Um, yeah. yeah. And that will mean sitting through some incredibly dull meetings. <laughs> and, and oh, here are any tips for keeping your cool in high pressure situations? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I can always I can only talk about what I do, um, you know, and, and, and I guess it's for everyone to find their own um, their own way. Um, and there's no reason why you can't try them out. Um, for me, a couple of things. One, which I spoke about earlier, which is about being very focused on what it is you are trying to do or what it is that's important to you. So in any given meeting, there will be a range of topics. If you start on the first item with passion and enthusiasm, by the time you get to your own item, you'll have run out of steam. Mm -hmm. Pick your battles, what's really important. Mm -hmm. Everything is not equal. And don't approach everything with the same energy because you'll tire out everybody else and you'll tire out yourself. So, you know, in that sense, pick your battles is a shorthand for it. Yeah. Then be so clear on what it is that you're trying to achieve and the rest becomes noise, you know? So when somebody is, is kind of rabbiting on at you about, you know, sort of um, some negative thing about, you know, you or, you know, your project or whatever, just keep focused on, is there anything in what they're saying that actually matters to me in moving this project forward, or is it noise? Lovely, great advice. And that was actually another question of Caroline as well. Um, and then we've got another question of Ali. What advice would you give to young girls and women when it comes to supporting each other when they are facing negativity from others? Um, I do think the whole question of support is a really interesting one. Um, as I said before, you know, uh, th th there is kind of an assumption that there is a, a unified sisterhood out there, and there really isn't. That's not to say there are not, you know, pockets of it, that it happens regularly, all those things, but it is not something you can take for granted, that every woman you meet is going to be supportive of you or what you are trying to achieve. And equally, when we see somebody struggling don't automatically assume we have to rescue them. Sometimes you have to allow people to experience things that are challenging for them in order for them to grow. But make sure that they know that you're there and remind them that you're there. Yeah, I think that that's a, a, 
can be a tough balance, but I think it's a lot about um, empowering, isn't it? You know, with, with our charity, we, we provide the environment to empower others to have their voice as an example, um, rather than speaking for them. Absolutely. But it, it, that, that's hard, isn't it? That's difficult. Yeah. Um, a question here from Gemma. Do you think that women and men, in brackets, from more working class backgrounds are put off getting involved in politics because they do not feel they relate to those they see on the media or won't be taken seriously? Um, is that really... When I say, is that really true? I don't mean, are you lying? But, I mean... Is that really the truth of what you're seeing out there? I mean, yes, of course, you can point to, um, quote, posh um, background politicians, etc. But my experience is that there's a lot of working class politicians out there, too. Um, yeah, I think I think particularly on parish and town councils, we don't know enough about them would be what I would say about that to know their background as such. Yeah. Whereas I think more, obviously, the big part is it's nationally to said about what education they've had. So I guess that's all we have as our frame of reference. But I think, you know, I think there's a lot of work from for parish and town councils on the strength of your meeting, really, that they could change the way and personalise the town councils and where, what they're doing, why they're doing it, where they're from. I mean, you know, if you take the Hanforth, Hanforth example, I mean, a, a bit later on in the video, you see um, um, poor Cynthia referred to as a lass from Wigan, you know? <laughs> as if there is nothing lower in the world than a lass <laughs> from Wigan. I've never actually been to Wigan, so, you know, maybe it's true. <laughs> not. <laughs> but you see my point? Yeah, I mean, definitely. There's nothing about Cynthia, um, there's nothing about her, her presentation that is, is kind of trying to be, you know, something she's not. Um, and then I say that this grumpy old man that somehow thinks that he had, I mean, he's a member of the public, he isn't yeah. actually in the councils, but somehow thinks that, you know, because he lives in Handforth or was brought up in Handforth, he's somehow superior to the last from Wigan. And I think that that's probably what Gemma was saying as well, that um, you, could, you could be belittled in that. Um, we've got a question here from Kay Wesley, who is the first women's equality um, local councillor in the country um, and is determined to um, stamp out misogyny in local government. Um, will you will you work for them, she said. <laughs> um, I might work with you. <laughs> Unless the salary is really good, in which case, yeah, I'll work for you. <laughs> And Kathy has said, do you think that you were belittled in the infamous video because you were a woman? It is interesting that because I think a lot of people have imagined how you were feeling in that time. In those moments, was that how you were feeling? A um, couple of things there. I, I, I knew more of the background um, and I knew that the clerk um, who had been suspended was male. And I knew that he had had um, a very difficult two years. So um, I guess going into that, um, I hadn't really made any um, assumptions about male, female, because yeah. it was really a continuation of that. Yeah. Um, and I think in that particular instance, it was more about power. Yeah. You know? and, and maybe it always is about power rather than sex, but you know, it certainly seemed to me to be more about power. Um, how was I feeling? Um, I, I guess um, when I came out of it, um, you know, because of course there was a time after it, so we, we come out of the difficult part, we then go into the less exciting parish council meeting itself, um, then we finish the meeting and I say to my husband, I don't want tea, I need wine. Mm. Um, and, you know, it, it, you know, then you watch some boring telly and you go to bed. Um, but I guess that I remember um, holding the mouse and thinking, I wish God, these, these buttons were bigger because my hands <laughs> were shaking. And I was finding it difficult to hover over the right place to, um, to actually put them into the waiting room. Um, but of course, um, I, I am older and I'm well practiced. Yeah. Um, they, they wouldn't have noticed. Why, why um, just a question for me, really, why was it shared and were you aware that it was going to go out in the public? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, um, in that way, no. Um, but the um, policy of the council had been to record its meetings mm. 
so I just followed what their policy was. Yeah. Uh, and when the meeting has been recorded, the link is then sent to the chairman of the meeting. Mm. And at that point, my involvement is done. Um, so that what they would normally have done um, if they'd had um, a clerk available is that they would have then posted it on their own website. Mm. Um, but of course, the um, chairman and the clerk wasn't likely to be doing that. <laughs> but I think it was sent to a Facebook pa um, page after that, and then some um, a, a nice um, young politics student down in London picked it up, um, and that was was where it was then posted on the internet. Generally. And that's the power, isn't it? So, a question from my sister: um, Who was your inspiration when you were growing up? Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock of Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> For any particular reason or? Oh, I, I mean, I bet you can work the reason out yourselves. I mean, <laughs> I, I just kind of found, I, in some ways, I am a very emotional person. Um, but, you know, I kind of feel that sometimes those emotions get in the way of what you're trying to say. So um, that sense of Mr. Spock, who's able to, to flatten all those emotions mm. and logically put forward a, um, a point, you know, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <my level. laughs> um, And I think this is our last one. Sorry, but you're shattered now. Um, have you got any tips for handling nerves? I used to be terrified about speaking in meetings and would often go home regretting not saying things. Um, sorry if you've already covered it, but I don't think you have around nerves, actually, uh, have you? Um, uh, uh, can I tell you a story? Yeah. Um, in my day job, um, I was often, I, I mean, I, I do face-to-face -face training for people. Um, I was often asked to speak at, at conferences and things like that. Um, and one, uh, this is going to be about 15 years ago, I was asked to speak at a national conference at a fringe meeting. Um, and I was sold this on the basis of, it'll be dead easy. Nobody ever turns up to these, be 20 people max. Walked into this room and there was nearly 400 people in the room. And it was set up as a, a huge platform at the front, great big IT screens and everything. Um, and I, I immediately thought this isn't what I was expecting. Sat down on the podium with the other guests, etc couple got up and spoke. The mouth had gone completely dry by this time. It was my turn to get up to speak, walked over to the platform and stood in front of the, the podium, which is great because you couldn't actually see your legs knocking because you were <laughs> behind the podium. Um, and in the moments that followed, which seemed like an eternity, <clears throat> I, I remember thinking, I don't care what the consequences are. But if I was confident I could get down those steps in these shoes, I would be out. I, I, I just don't care. I've got to get out of here. Um, and what seemed like an eternity passed, and there was no faces in that room that I recognised. And then I spotted one, Frank. Um, and I started to talk to Frank. And then 20 minutes went past. I don't even remember what I said, but mm -hmm. 20 minutes went past, lots of clapping, um, and um, I then went and sat down again. But the, the, um, the speaker's place had um, a little um, button across the front so you couldn't see what was on your, on your desk, and there was a glass of water there. And I thought, oh, God, I need a drink. And as I lifted the glass up, my hands were shaking so much. <laughs> there was no way that was getting to my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so for me... The secret was to to bring it back to something that you feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. The room of four hundred overwhelmed me, but being able to speak to somebody about something I felt very passionate about. I mean, again, this it comes back to um, when I talk from a prepared speech. I'm as dull as ditch water. You might yeah. ask me, I'm anyway, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, but when I talk about what I'm interested in. I like to think you can hear the enthusiasm. Yeah. So it's about, again, it's back to the, you know, um, question like, you know, make politics sexy. You well, we can't do that. But whatever you are interested in, your enthusiasm will come across. Yeah. And that's all you're really doing. You're telling them about something that's important to you. Yeah, definitely. Help one person. Last question. Um, 
because you're eating into my time now so this is absolutely fine because <laughs> i will only have that um somebody said about the um comments about power interesting um and do you find the tactics to shut you up differ um though depending on gender that's a really interesting question um Men will tend to, to talk over me and will talk louder. Um, women are more likely to, to kind of be, can I say sneaky? Yeah. Kind of, you know, sort of um, left field you with a question that kind of touches on something personal. Yeah, I, I definitely experienced that myself. So I would completely agree with that word, sneaky. Almost my experience, it's like a curveball. The, the, it's like, whoa, where's that come from? And, yeah, and usually phrased in, I'm your best friend, Kate, and I'm only really telling you this because I think it's something that mm. you, know, you will want to hear. Mm. Yeah. And then you hear it and you think, I really didn't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So thank you so much. I think there could have been questions all day but i know it's exhausting answering questions on the cuff like that we really really appreciate your time especially when you were i know you're on the um, last leg last night weren't you yeah. <laughs> oh, yesterday oh and i've got her autograph as well which is exciting <laughs> <laughs> but it's been sent to me anyway <laughs> Um, so I really appreciate it. Thank you ever so much. And thanks Very for your well. patience with my IT at the start of it. Not at all. And if there's anything I can do in the future to help support the aims of Motherwell, please get in touch. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. bye.